Hey guys, Burton Snyder here, how are you? So I thought I would film a video about how to navigate a record store. I know it sounds sort of easy and to the point, but there's always different things to think about when you're in record stores about how to do it, where things might be. They're not always in the places that you might expect. I'm outside Sound Exchange. I'm gonna use them as the example. Let's head inside and I'll give you some tips about how it is that I at least go about navigating record stores. So right from the get-go, when I come into a record store, I kind of like to do a nice overview of the store and kind of understand everything, take it all in a little bit before I really kind of decide where it is to focus. All right, so in this particular store, Anthony's got it broken up as CDs down this aisle, CDs down below in here. And if we go over to this side, you're going to see that we've got lots and lots of vinyl. Now there is still a middle rack of CDs here, but he kind of divided the store in half so that we've got records on one side of the store and CDs on the other side of the store. All right, so here's one of the classic things in record stores. There's usually not enough space to have everything out, at least where we might like it on the walls. So you're gonna see, you know, you've got the stuff that's up here. If we're standing up and we're looking at this stuff that's in these bins, we immediately understand that. You go through that, but oftentimes, there's stuff that's down below in racks. So don't hesitate to ask your local store owner if you can go through that stuff. If it's out like this, you can pretty much understand that it would be okay, but sometimes the stuff is in drawers or other things. But like I said, never hesitate to ask if you can go through more product that you're finding out on the floor. All right, so similarly the way I was talking about there being the stuff that's down below, we've got stuff that's on the walls as well, which is actually a sort of backup or duplicate of more stuff from these bands uh, that's here in the bins, but also on the walls. So record stores like this, and as you can see, you know, really stocked to the gills, full of all kinds of stuff that's in here. You really have to check out all of the stuff. So if you just go to one part, one section in a store, you might not find everything. So definitely ask the store owner about where everything is located. All right, so after you've gotten a feel for the store, my recommendation is to browse the whole store from A to Z. I know that sounds like a lot, but you never know what you're gonna find within it. You wanna look at the section cards. You wanna know where you are within it. So meaning if they have genres, but also the artist card names, right? So you want to check whether there is a section specifically for the artist, but if not, make sure to look in miscellaneous. There's always basically two areas. You're gonna look under an artist card, you're gonna look in miscellaneous. And you're gonna keep an eye out for, sometimes there's cards or things that might say, see another area and you wanna know where that is. It's also the thing that maybe the store owner is gonna tell you about when you ask them how the store is laid out. Another thing here to continue with that is make sure to always check both new and used sections, right? So if you're in the new section, like we were just talking about, checking the artist cards, the section, maybe a miscellaneous section, in the used section, you're gonna sometimes find different things. Or if you wanna spend a little less, maybe you'll find that same one that they have in the new section used, but also it might be if um, you're in the use section and maybe that copy is a little too beat up for you, make sure to go check the new section because maybe you wanna spend a little bit more and get a new copy of it. And on that same line of thinking, there's always wanna know about or be aware of there could be back stock. And if you can't find something on the floor, don't hesitate to check with the store owner about back stock. You never really know. You know, just because you've checked the section and you didn't see it there, uh, they could have it in back stock. It could also just be in a different part of the store that you're unaware of. And so that in and of itself is the, a good reason to ask. But I occasionally will find something that maybe has a manufacturer defect in the way that it was shipped or, or got damaged in shipping or who knows, you know, could just be rough people going through it could dent or, or damage something. Or same thing like with the used, maybe the person who had it before didn't take particularly good care of it. 
So I like to go up and ask the store owner if they have another copy. Sometimes they do. And it's the same price. I can get a better one for the same price of something. And I don't have to go home with that one that is maybe a little subpar. So always ask uh, the store owners, uh, first of all, whether you're looking in the right area, whether that album that you're specifically looking for might be somewhere else in the store or if they have it in back stock. All right, so I'm in the vinyl section for this particular one, but here, as you can see with these header cards, we've got band names, artists, Boston, Bouncing Souls, David Bowie, right? They're big enough artists to have their own sections. But if you go to the beginning of these sections, and we kind of got to go ways back here, but we've got a whole new section and a use section miscellaneous. So always check the miscellaneous sections for things. You never know what you're going to find in those. All right, another thing being that on a you know, section of CDs like this, which we're looking at, has a lot of stuff from Yes in it. There's all the solo stuff in here. We got John Anderson, we got Steve Howe stuff in here, Rick Wakeman, more Rick Wakeman, just lots and lots. So oftentimes in these sections, you're gonna find more stuff from an artist, not just the name of the artist, but the side projects and solo albums as well. All right, so as we peruse down with the CDs and stuff, sometimes you gotta know who the artist was part of in order to uh, know where to find something. So in case in point with like Eric Clampton, we've got Eric Clampton, but we've got other stuff in here like Derek and the Dominoes. So not under D, but it's in the Eric Clampton section. Another key thing I think would be is to never be afraid to ask for help, to ask the store owner where to find your favorite artist. Um, I know a lot of you guys just want to go in and peruse and don't be bothered, don't be bugged, and that's fine. When I walk in and I, they ask me if I need any help, they always say, no, I'm just browsing. But after I go out and I'm looking around for a while, at that point, if I can't find something, I'm going to go ask because... I might be thinking of it differently than they are. And, you know, just like uh, you guys saw in the previous video clip where Derek and the Dominoes D was under Eric Clapton C, I don't know that I necessarily would have thought of that, although that makes sense. But the, the bands Blind Faith and the Yardbirds, which Eric Clapton was both part of, is not in that section. Those bands considered big enough to be on their own, although I don't know why Derek and the Dominoes isn't. But... Um, there's some rationale behind all of this. So if you're looking for everything Eric Clapton and you're thinking it's all going to just be under Eric Clapton, it might not be. And if you are somebody who really only knows him through the song Layla and Derek and the Dominoes and you're going in looking under D and you can't find it, that's a good reason to always ask for help. Um, and you never know where they're going to point you to and what you might find out from that. All right, so as you guys can see, lots and lots of stuff here at this record store, like most record stores. And so not just the stuff that's in the bins that we've been talking about, not stuff that's just right in front of you like these, stuff that's on the walls, there's always stuff above that. And as we pan around, you can see there's stuff all over this store in different areas, little crevices, and you just really got to go through it all. Take your time and spend going through it. Look in multiple sections. I can't say that enough about it. You again, never know what you're going to find hiding away in some of those cool areas. All right, guys, so I'm going to use this one as an example here. Talking about box sets, right? Where are they located in stores? It's always going to be different, but here's the thing. There's box sets down below here, and you can see them up here on this wall. Now, those, I think, are vinyl-related. Then we've got the ones that are behind us here, and I'm going to walk backwards so that you can see all the ones that are up there. And if we spin around again, there's even more behind me on that side. So just case in point, lots of locations that things can be at and you definitely want to be keeping your eye out so that you know that you can hit it all because just because you go through an a to z in one area doesn't mean there isn't more somewhere else for you guys to be checking out so another thing about record stores is lots of them have these new release sections in them and so you might go out to the section looking for say the brand new ace fraley but if it just dropped it's going to be on the wall so you definitely got to check the new release sections as well as going out on the floor and looking for stuff there 
All right, as we wrap this thing up here, I wanted to just do a little recap. And really, during this video, we hit on seven things that I think will really help you navigate record stores. And so the first thing up was, you know, take an account of the whole store. Take a, a look around, look up high, look down low. Really get a feel for everything that's in there before you start. So you don't think you're only going to be looking in one area and leave. You might find out that there's some other areas to focus on. Number two, ask the store owner how it is that they've laid things out. You might learn from them that there's multiple sections to go to that will uh, have the artists that you're looking for within it. Number three, to check the artist section, but also check miscellaneous. Case in point sometimes is people just misfile things. They don't know there's a section card for Boston, and they put that band under the miscellaneous B. So you can go to the regular section. They have a card. If you don't find what you're looking for, go check the miscellaneous. Sometimes you get lucky, and it will be there. Number four, uh, there's, you know, the band section sometimes have solo albums, side projects, and different things like that mixed into it. So definitely peruse up and down. And when you see that random person's name inserted in there and you don't know who that is, look it up because it might be a member of the band and it might be just what you're looking for, something new, something that's still in line with the band itself, but not uh, from the typical band uh, name album that you might be expecting. And number five, um, think about other bands and who it is that that artist has been part of in order to maybe know where they are filed away at. We talked about that with Derek and the Dominoes, Eric Clapton being grouped together. So sometimes you're going to go in thinking of one you know, name for that artist or band that that person is part of and you can't find it and you're really kind of shocked about it, but it's actually because it's been grouped together somewhere else. And number six, uh, take your time, don't rush, go through it all. That extra time spent in the store can actually lead to some really great finds. Maybe you don't always have that time, that is okay, but definitely some time, find the time to spend the time and go through the whole thing because you never know what it'll lead to. All right, and the last thing, point number seven, um, you know, if you're looking for a newly released album and you go to the section and you can't find it, don't forget that most of these stores have new release walls somewhere that they have the new releases out. Sometimes they sit on those walls for a number of weeks, even a month or so, before they get filed into the section. And so if you walk in and you're looking for something and it's a new release... It might just be on a new release wall. And so there you go. There's seven points for you at least that I hope help you navigate record stores. These are things that I think are pretty universal across the board. In my experience of having hit up at least 20 plus record stores throughout the New York City, New Jersey area, these are the things that I have come across. And again, I'm hoping they help you. All right, everyone, take care. Have a good one. And I'll talk to you real soon. Bye-bye.